Treatment really depends on the diagnosis. So with yeast, we talked about fluconazole, for example, for the Canada Albicans infections. Uh, for bacterial vaginosis, which is another condition that the younger women tend to get, uh, it's going to be sometimes very prolonged courses of antibiotic therapy, um, either clindamycin or metronidazole gel. Um, for other skin problems, like or for skin problems like uh, vulvodynia, we've had a lot of success using different medications for neuropathic pain, gabapentin, amitriptyline. Recently, we've been using a cream that has gabapentin and amitriptyline mixed together, which has been really helpful. Lichen sclerosis, it's going to be anti-inflammatories. Um, atrophy, it's going to be vaginal estrogen primarily. So it's, it's a wide range of, uh, of treatments depending on the diagnosis. And I think the point to emphasize is that to get these women better, you really need first to get a, a more accurate diagnosis. And I think that's where people fall short. Uh, also important to realize that sometimes patients may have three, four problems working together in concert to make them uncomfortable. So you have to tease apart the different issues, treat each of them in turn until they start feeling the way they want to feel. Most of these treatments are mainly medical treatments. The, the one actually which, um, for which we sometimes use surgery is vulvodynia. So with vulvodynia, this is a condition where patients have pain, usually right at the back at the opening of the vagina, and there's a surgery that we do called a vestibulectomy where we'll remove that abnormal area, create a flap of vaginal tissue, and replace those pa painful areas with vaginal tissue, and it works about 90% of the time, so it's actually very effective. Some of it is knowing wh what to look for. Some of it is knowing what are the proper tests to order. Um, I think there's a, a big under-reliance on doing a, a yeast culture, which is a, a very simple test. You do a swab, you send it to the lab. We, we have patients who literally fly in from California because they haven't been able to find someone willing to do a simple yeast culture, which any lab should be able to do. Um, and then for some of the conditions, it's also a question of coming up with better treatments. So again, going back to the yeast infections with the um, yeast infections that are not due to Canada albicans. There are other treatments that are pretty effective. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of boric acid, which is a home remedy for yeast. Turns out that for the, the non-albicans yeast, boric acid capsules work two-thirds of the time. So here's a, a homeopathic, or actually an alternative medication. It's actually quite effective for the non-albicans yeast. Chronic vaginitis is not the most glamorous area of medicine. And so I think for many providers, it's a fairly labor-intensive area of medicine. Um, it's an area of medicine where they may not realize that there's a need because uh, they're not realizing that these patients are coming in on a recurrent basis. Um, there are a number of specialists who are really focused on these and you know, maybe five established programs, but then a lot of other providers who I think are really expert at evaluating women with these problems and treating these problems. And they may not have a, a formal center, but uh, there are also places where we'll send patients. For example, if they're traveling in from far, uh, we might find a place closer to them that's more convenient. I think the biggest change is my population has changed. And um, women are very afraid to take hormones. Because they're afraid to take hormones, we see a lot of women with atrophic vaginitis uh, from a lack of estrogen. The other thing is that I think the lack of estrogen in turn has triggered a lot of cases of lichen sclerosis and lichen planus. So uh, for 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I'd see maybe one patient a week with lichen sclerosis or lichen planus. Now I, I see a patient at least once or twice a day who has lichen sclerosis or lichen planus. So lichen sclerosis and lichen planus are local autoimmune conditions of the vagina. Actually, lichen sclerosis is primarily a, a vulvar problem. Uh, lichen planus, sometimes it can be the vulva, sometimes it can be the vagina. We've seen patients who have it in their mouth, people who have difficulty swallowing because they have it in the esophagus. So they, with lichen planus, you can actually get it in disparate areas, not just the genital area. And actually, every once in a while, we send patients off to, uh, to get diagnosed properly because they've had difficulty swallowing, for example, and no one has known what it was, or they've had bleeding gums and painful gums, and their dentist doesn't know what it is. I think women are very eager to get it figured out and to get it fixed. I think sometimes they, they may give up for a while if they're not able to find a provider who can help them. But in general, women really keep searching because it affects their quality of life in so many different ways. 
I think the future is that we're hoping for better treatments down the road. Just as an example, right now we're involved with two different clinical trials looking at new treatments for yeast. Um, one is a new drug which looks much more effective in vitro than, uh, than fluconazole, which has been around since the early 1990s. Uh, we're ex also doing a vaccine study to try to alter the immune response of the vagina to yeast in the hopes that that'll be a therapeutic vaccine. Um, there are also new drugs now that are being looked at for bacterial vaginosis. So um, the, the pipeline's actually been fairly empty for well over a decade, but all of a sudden there's a lot of interest.